With trains now running at Chadwick, it's time to share with you some of my favourite locos. Hi, welcome back to Chadwick Model Railway. I'm Charlie. As you may be aware, I now have two complete loops running right around this area of the room. Um, so I can run two trains all the time, one in each direction, and it's great. And it gives me now a chance to do stuff as my trains go zinging by. Which also gives me the opportunity now to drag out my locomotives and give them all a kind of a dusting off and take them for a spin. I'm a sad individual in as much as I like documentation. And so what I've compiled is, is a book. And this contains all my um, loco manuals. And uh, on the front page here is a list of my sound locos. And if I could see, it would help. And this is a spreadsheet which shows you my 13 sound locos. There's also a page on my, on my um, non-sound fitted locos, of which I've got 22, and then seven locos that um, have yet to have decoders fitted. And looking at the spreadsheet, I highlight areas that need sorting out, such as um, that class 25 Bobo, the speaker needs to be replaced, and the windows need to be repaired, and um, the crew need to be sorted out. I imagine one of them's fallen off. Um, the one above it, the class 22, is a poor runner. We'll come back to that. And as you can see, though, I highlight various bits that need sorting out. And down towards the bottom, you've got a class 52 Western Fusilier, which has a domino head code, which I need to change back into an ordinary head code. And um, so I have these spreadsheets uh, to, to give me a clue on what I need to get sorted out. And even the DC... Uh, only locos um, before they can sort of they're worth fitting chips I need to do some work on those. Having these spreadsheets is not necessarily a good idea and suits everybody but it kind of suits me. Um, I've got what 22, 30, about 40 locos um, and I know people with 500 locos. I don't know what how they survive to be perfectly honest. I think it's part of our nature to collect um, and if I can just give you one little snippet and that's the word sable sable stuff acquired beyond life expectancy and it's something I, I picked up and I do preach you can go to a model railway show and think there's a nice kit I'll go and buy that I'll make that up one day and of course you never do so I try my utmost now not to buy too much stuff and in this time of lockdown, I can't, <laughs> I can't do it anyway, can I? So there we go. So people have asked me um, how I got into Bottle Railways and what's it all about. Well, I think it was the Christmas when I was four years old. My mother and father bought me a circle of track, a river bridge, couldn't quite figure out, a, an engine and one coach. And I don't know, oops, they've fallen apart. I don't know which engine it was, but it was one of these 040s um, of which I've taken apart, lost the motor and everything else. Um, but I've kept the two basic chassis um, from then on. And then as I got older and became a teenager, I met up with a guy called James, or in those days, Jamie. And we became sort of avid train spotters. And I still retain my loco shed and my combo type books with all the underlinings of the locomotives we saw. At the age of 17 things started to change and I ran away and joined the Navy. And in around 1978, I don't know why, I walked past a second hand shop and I saw this model of Evening Star. So I thought, you know, I'll buy that. That'll be kind of quite useful. So I bought it um, and did nothing with it. It just went into the attic with the rest of the stuff. So where does it, where, what brings me as a railway modeler today? Well, I'd left the Navy and I was a photographer. When I left, when I left the Navy, um, I became a full-time photographer and sort of that has progressed into videographer. 
but photography was always my ha- my hobby, my habit, my hobby. And then, so, so I left and it became, you know, my, my profession. I didn't have a hobby anymore. And I went along to a couple of model railway shows and there in the corner was a little layout with a class 25 bobo going bop, 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 bop. And I thought, blimey, that's good. It's got a sound. And that was me hooked on it. I have an electrical background, not an electronics background, really. Um, a bit of an aircraft electrician when I was working for the Navy. And so I do understand a little bit about, about basic electrics. And, you know, I can read a book and try to figure it out. And this, of course, it's a lens manual um, on the lens silver plus chip, because clearly that was beyond my ability. That's another story. So I went and bought this class 25. And if you remember in my little book, it said that uh, it needs a new speaker um, because it's, uh, it's a pretty rubbish sound. And as you can see here, the window and the driver's mate need to be sorted out. And so my journey began into model railway construction. And I did purchase one of those little class 25 Bobos. And if I flash it up, the sound isn't wonderful anymore. Um, I think it's all been overtaken by technology. It's got a, I believe it's got an ESU 3.5 uh, chip in it. And if I just blow the horn, this is awful. <laughs> there we go. But at the end of the day, it brings another dimension to model railways. And if I just turn the sound off, rather than shutting down, it just turns the sound off. Um, oh, and I bought myself a Backman Dynamis, um, which was my first um, controller. I've now grown out of that and I use um, Digitrax. Um, nothing wrong with the rest of them, I'm sure, you know, lens and all these, um, yeah, all the rest of these type things. Um, but that's what I use and it, and it works. But I still use the Dynamis uh, for program. It seems quite simple. But that is where my journey began. And what I'd like to do now is just take you through some of my favourite locos and uh, for me to explain why, why I particularly like them. I think it would be fair to say that we all love shunters and this is one of Hornby's 08s. It came with sound, but the sound was pretty dreadful. Um, and there should be a video here to show you what I've done. But I've ripped it all out, put a different chip in it, put two uh, sugar cube speakers in, and this is what the sound we end up with. And it really is quite nice. The advantage with this one is I actually fitted a stay alive. So if I, if we send him off and then I lift it up, you get a couple of seconds or half a second of sound and motion as he goes and makes his way across. Now if I turn the sound off and notice this one shuts down rather than that class 25 which um, just sort of cuts off immediately and I send him on his way again and when I pick it up this time the motion goes on for a little bit longer because the sound uh, system isn't drawing any of the power but Ideally, with these little uh, chassis locos, 040s and 060s, having a stay alive in them makes all the difference. Always been a favourite of mine, and always will be.
Now, as you may have gathered, I'm not a lover of the P word. Prototypical is a kind of a, <clears throat> I find it elitist term. I like, you know, authentic is a kind of a, a better term, really. But talking about prototypical, this is a, is a class 22 produced by, a model of a 22 produced by uh, North British, British originally. And it was probably the worst locomotive that British Railways ever produced. It was absolutely awful and so very unreliable. A lot of the North British types, I think it was 21, 22 and 29, actually stayed up near the factory because they couldn't be trusted to roam too far from home. And why I say this is a very prototypical model is because this one is just as unreliable. It is appalling. It clearly is the wrong colour blue, and if I just go and get another blue, so I'm sure that you can see the difference there. It has valances, just not on a real thing, but unlike the real thing, these ones fall off all the time, and I just got fed up with them in the end, I've left them all off. And I've got one particular curved point, which goes around the inside track. Now, this one then decides to jump off of that uh, curve point and uh, two days ago it was sat across the next track awaiting my warship passenger train which then came trundling along and obviously the whole lot came off. It will run and no, it will run clockwise around my layout so um, yeah clockwise duties only what a nice remarkable locomotive actually the detailing on it is lovely it's a nice looking model and better than that as well is the sound which I got from Road and Rails on this one is fabulous. Rest assured with this class 22 it will never ever derail if I'm filming. God, see what I mean? Now here's a real favourite of mine, Hornby's class 50. Good sound system in this one. I've replaced the speaker with a bass reflex speaker. And I've also disconnected the elastic band kind of thing that runs the fan. I think it just bleeds too much power. Coming around now is the Class 50 with the bass reflex speaker. And I do like it, I, I do like the sound of this. I've still got some work to do on this locomotive because it still bears a, a Scottish head code, but it is a lovely loco. Now this is a class 37 from Backman and it's the split head code version. I've pulled the noses off and resprayed the nose from a, a half yellow end to full yellow end and it's fitted with sound and it's the double iPhone speaker. And it's just a nice throaty loco.
Now here's an unusual one because this is a class 121 DMU and this is the power car and there's also a trailer car with lights and pickups and stuff. But when I turn this power on, uh, the sound on, wait for it, I know you're getting excited now. Clearly that's not the sound of a 121 DMU. Because what it actually is, it's been reblown by Lego Soundman Biffo um, into a Class 37. And the reason being is this has got a, um, an ESU 3.5 chip. And <laughs> it begs belief really that um, people like Southwest Digital and the like will now refuse to re-blow older chips, but Lego Soundman Biffo did for me. And the reason being is because the picks up pickups on this aren't that good. So I thought what I would do is I'd replace it with um, a Zimo uh, sound chip and uh, stay alive. I've never used Zimo before, so this is what's going in here. But I thought, well, I don't really want to waste this chip um, so he's going to re he's reblown it for me. So all I need to do now is whip this chip out and pop it into my class 37. And here is that class 37. And um, so there'll be the, the new noses uh, ready to get uh, to go on. This one's yet to have its head code put in. Um, so yeah, whip the sound uh, the sound chip out of this one. Uh, pop it into here with a 100 ohm speaker rather than the, the small little round ones we get in here and I'll have another class 37 um, green with four yellow ends in my fleet which will be rather exciting and it saves the wastage of these old 3.5 um, chips ver version 3.5 chips going to waste but do you have any steam locos I hear you say well actually yes I do I have this 9f and I showed you earlier that uh, Evening Star. Well, that Evening Star became a donor for this one because um, this chassis was coming apart and we used the chassis from that tender to put, put into this one. That was had a Ringfield motor in it um, and this one now runs on its own motor, um, but it is what it is. I've bought it by mistake, okay, um, because what I wanted to do was have a a King George V running around my layout and the reason for that is in 1971 King George V was the first steam loco which was allowed to return to mainline use and it was pulling a load of these type of Pullman, they're not coaches are they, Pullman cars I think they are, is that right? Yeah I think Pullman cars they call them, um, except they were green by the way they weren't, uh, they weren't in that livery and um, not the 9F because I don't know if you know this, 9Fs aren't actually allowed on mainline, uh, mainline traffic in, in this country anymore and it's because of this centre wheel. It has no flange and the wheel is wider and because of that it will catch on the catch, on, no it will catch on the check rails of today's modern points which is why you will only find examples of 9Fs um, on things like the the North the Yorkshire Moors Railway. They've got one up there. I think it's, um, is it Black Prince? Anyway, they've got one up there. Um, but yeah, I'm afraid sadly on British Rail, these things are no longer allowed, which is, which is terribly sad really. Um, but there we go. So yes, I do have a steam locomotive. I don't particularly want to keep hold of that one. I'm after King George V obviously with sound to pull my Pullman cars around because it will be in keeping with my layout, which kind of runs 1968 to 1976. The um, reason I go to 1976 is even though it's a post-tops era and mine is a pre-tops layout, I wanted to include an HST, a 125 unit, which I shall show you right now. So here we have it, the 125. And these are a model of those run in the West Countries in 1976. Um, they are the originals because they have the guards uh, area 
in the locomotive and that was found to be far too noisy and the guards started to go on strike hence in the newer coaches well the, the subsequent coaches the guards um, had an area in the first coach rather than in here because of the, uh, the noise issue and these two have both got version 4 ESU sound chips in um, the loco Excel itself had sorry the power car itself has a bass reflex speaker and the trailer car has an earth mover too and these are very nice in reality it might surprise you to know or whether this is an urban myth that in one year an HST unit would run the same amount of miles as a steam A4 in its lifetime which I find a staggering fact but it shows the reliability of these units that were only built as an interim until the APT was supposed to come in which of course turned out to be um, somewhat controversial let's say so what do they sound like I hear you say well they sound marvellous and the cars start individually And the horn always blows on the front car and depending on which way it's programmed to run so if I blow one horn and then reverse it and the deeper horn is the one coming off the earth mover uh, I think it's the earth mover 2 speaker So you can tell the lead car is just a little more tinny, um, but it is a cracking locomotive. If I shut them down, again they shut down one at a time. And then once you, once you pop all your cars in between, um, it really is good. And with these I've used these Hunt couplings. Uh, to pop these together um, sadly I broke a coach pulling the old Hornby um, bogies off so I've got a little bit of repair job to do there so I'm just running I think it is with six coaches rather than the seven Of course we all have favourites and as I stem from Swindon, though that isn't something I admit to generally in public, I have an affinity for class 52 westerns. I was fortunate enough to see the lot, the last one being 1018 western buccaneer and I remember the day as if it was just 48 years ago. Frightening isn't it? Anyway this is the Helgen version. Um, and it's equipped with, I think this is uh, version 5, uh, ASU version 5 sound. Um, the methodology of the uh, design with the cover is, <laughs> is quite bizarre, isn't it, really? <laughs> Good old Halgen, marvellous. Saves on screws, doesn't it, if you just 
clip it together and of course the clips just don't they just don't last anyway um, it's a nice lo locomotive it runs very very well um, and the cab interior is dreadful but we are where we are so perhaps we need a bit a little bit of time to give it a bit of a, a tickety booing up as they say but we'll have a little look at this one um, and it is um, probably joint first with the HST is my favorite Well, that was a quick look at about half a dozen locos and we've really only scratched the surface there's warships and hymex and loads of other little things that i have an interest in um, and hopefully we'll get around to that in the future in the past i've recommended tools that people were interested in and um, they've asked me where i've got them from so what i've done is i've constructed an amazon page and you'll see it in the show more tab below and if you've got any recommendations for tools that you've tried out and you think that they are trustworthy, then please leave a comment down below and I'll include them on the page and therefore we can all benefit from your experience. Well, that just about wraps things up and I'd like to thank the people who donate to my channel. I really, really appreciate your donations as I do to my patrons who, without their support, it would make my job very difficult to um, bring in new stuff to try out on your behalf and if you'd like to become a patron there's a link there and also please don't forget to subscribe there should be a subscribe button obviously it's free and a video here and here and all being well i'll see you next friday take care thanks a lot bye bye